Hey guys, Davis here. Thanks for checking out my Champions Online videos and giving me your feedback. I promise I will try to use less us. I actually wrote some stuff down this time around as per your suggestions, so hopefully that will help. Anywho, this week I'll be taking a look at the free-to-play game Lord of the Rings Online, which, in case you didn't know, is based on the Tolkien book series and movie trilogy of the same name. The story takes place slightly before and then runs parallel to the story of the, the movies and the books, and you will actually even interact with characters like Aragorn and Gandalf, like Elias, Gimli, stuff like that. The game was developed by Turbine, which is the same company that's responsible for the Asheron's Call series and Dungeons & Dragons Online, which, heads up, I will be previewing that game at some point in the future, so get excited for that. So the game originally launched in April of 2007, and it was very well received, getting mid-sevens up to nines in terms of score, and it was followed up with two expansions so far. The first one, which is called Mines of Moria, was released in November of 2008, and the second title, Siege of Morkwood, dropped in December of 2009. And it wasn't until September of 2010 that this game went free-to-play. So that's some background, just some general background on the game, and now let's go take a look at the character creation system. So here we are at the character creation screen, where it first asks you to select a race, and you can choose from one of four races. These are, I think, everyone would agree with the four main races of like the movies and the books. Humans, dwarves, hobbits, and elves. And they all have, as you can see, male or female choices, except, oddly enough, the dwarf, which I believe is a throwback to like the movies and the books where they talked about how they don't really know what the female dwarves look like, or even if they exist, if they come out of the ground. So I think that's kind of a nice little touch. And then here, after you choose your race, you get to select your class, and you have um, six ones that are free, and then this rune keeper and the warden are ones you have to pay for. So you have the burglar, who is a debuff. That's his, his main role is debuffing enemies, and then after that, doing damage. You have the captain, who's kind of like the opposite of the burglar. He will, his main role is to buff his allies and himself, do some light healing, and then after that, do damage. Then you have the champion, who is your basic, your strong, melee damage character. Plays kind of like a, a warrior. He has stances, much like a, a WoW warrior does, um, where you can sacrifice defense to gain some offense, or gain some defense, but you have to sacrifice offense, that kind of thing. Then you have Guardian, which is like a prop warrior or a, tank, or a prop pally. It's just a tank kind of character. You have Hunter, who is ranged, ranged DPS, bow and arrows kind of stuff. Uh, no pet, I believe, in this game. I, I played a little bit as a, of a hunter, didn't get a pet. And then the game oddly, randomly deleted my character. I don't know why. I was kind of pissed off. Um, Loremaster is like a support class. It's got, it's got crowd control as its kind of main thing, and then elemental damage. So it, I, I'm assuming it plays most, this is the most magey type uh, class in this game. And then you have the Minstrel, who is just your, your healer. He uses song, because I know song and music is a big part of Tolkien's books. And then you have, let's click on Rune Keeper, which is one of these like advanced classes. Um, and they, they do both damage and healing. Uh, but interestingly enough, you have to choose during each fight whether you're going to focus on healing or damage. And depending on what you choose, it opens up new moves for either the damage side or the healing side. Um, and then this, the other one is the Warden, who is another tank kind of character who uses javelins at range, and, uh, and that's what he does. So once you pick, let's do, let's make it simple, like male, burglar. You go here, and this is where you, you create your name. But interestingly enough, you also get to choose your origin. Uh, now, I think this is mostly for people who are familiar with Tolkien's universe. It doesn't mean a whole lot to me. I know Gondor and Rohan from the movies, but I'm, I'm sure for people that are like really invested in the books, this is like awesome that you get to choose it. And you can see it gives you a slightly different look, much like you know people from different countries on Earth have different skin types. So, And then over on the right here is the, the uh, sort of generic kind of, you can change your mouth, your eyebrows, just change up how you look and then you enter a name. So I'm gonna have a burglar, and I'm gonna name him Ribs. There we go. Click Create, and there he is. There's my character. So that is basically the background on the game and a, a look at the character creation system. 
Uh, tomorrow I'll have my new show, but then the next day I'm going to put up a, a video showing you the combat and the leveling and other cool systems like that. So tune in, then leave some comments now, follow me on Twitter at Team Davis, and uh, I hope to talk to you guys later. Bye.